Welcome to Can TV Hotline Let's Talk Etiquette. My name is Nathan Wright and I am the host of Let's Talk Etiquette. And we have a dynamic show prepared for you, but before we get to that, I'd like for you to call me. You can call 312 738 1060. Let me get that to you again. 312-738-1060. And again, we have such a dynamic show all in plan for you all ready to go. Uh, but let me say this, my co-host, Miss Gina Jameson, she got caught up in traffic. And it's a terrible night out there, as you know, if you're out there, if you've been out there, you know how the weather is. So she may be able to get here in time. But if she do, does not, then we're going to go ahead with this show. Ah, the topic for today. Uh, it's the topic we had last week. This is part two of our topic from last week. Table and dining etiquette. Yes, what an enduring ritual that we know as table and dining etiquette. Last week we covered, let me give you kind of a look at what we covered last week so that you can kind of get a sense of uh, what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, let's see here. Uh, my overhead, there it is. Now, if you remember this layout from last week, uh, you can easily see that the table is set informal. And the reason it's set informal is because the napkin is off to the left. And of course, your knives and spoons are on your right and your dessert utensils are at the top of the plate and all of your drinking utensils are off to the right. Now this is important because this is really about international dining. It's really about how the table is set regardless of whether you're in America or you're in Paris or you're in London or you're in Canada. The table will be set consistently like you see that in this diagram here. Give it to you again. Okay, so the reason it's set that way primarily it be, is because it favors the European style of dining. In other words, in Europe you favor your left hand. So as you can see in the diagram, my forks are on the left side and my knives and spoons are on the right side. So this is in essence favors the left hand because in Europe they eat with their left hand. Whereas in America, here, we like to do what we call the zigzag, switching the fork from the left to the right. And this is the difference in the fundamentals of eating European versus eating American style. And so I want to start out talking about European dining. Uh, it's much more simpler than eating American style. Is least, is you're least likely to drop a utensil and embarrass yourself because people will take note if you drop a utensil. You can imagine how that sounds when you drop it. But if you keep the fork in the left hand, then of course you're able to manage it from that point of view. Okay? Now there are four basic rules to eating whether you're eating European or eating American style. But because we're going to start talking about eating European, the basic rules is you start first by placing your napkin in your lap. Second, of course, depending on where you're having dinner or lunch at, if you're having dinner in a restaurant versus having dinner in your home or you're a guest of someone in their home. So there are, there are a set of rules that dictate exactly what you do under those circumstances. But we don't just kind of simplify it today so that you have a look better basic sense of you know what it was required to eat European style. Now once you have your napkin in your lap and remember your napkin is always to be to your left. In other words the napkin is on the left side because your napkin should be brought from your left side and into the space between you and the person sitting next to you on your left side and then allow that napkin to fold open and then place it into your lap. Okay? Now, like I said, there are several minor rules 
that you have to be aware of depending on where you're eating, if you're in someone's home. There are rules of comportment, uh, there are rules of protocol that you would have to adhere to because you are a guest in someone's home. And of course, the host and the hostess are really the ones who are you're their guest of and therefore you would have to adhere to some some things, basic basic things, just to show respect to your host and to your hostess. But I want to talk basically about the four fundamental rules of eating European style. Now, once you uh, have your first course, and let's say for example your first course is soup, okay? Now I do not have a soup bowl in this diagram so we're going to just you know, go through the motions. Okay? Now, we would take the soup, and the soup would be brought into you and placed on your place plate. Okay? Now, basically, there are two kinds of soup spoons. And I'm going to see if I can slide these two spoons in here so that you can see them over this overhead. Okay? And if you notice, the one in my left hand is more round, bowl shape. And the one in my right hand is kind of oblong shape. Now, when you look at the spoons in your, at your table setting, like in this particular setting, you can see the spoon is this spoon, the longer oval-shaped spoon. And, of course, not this spoon. Okay? So because your courses are in order, if it's soup, salad, your main entree, and, of course, your dessert. It depends on the host or the hostess to decide how those courses are going to come to you and what order they're going to come. But part of understanding how to read the table will tell you or give you a good sense what course is going to be first, second, third, and fourth. Now I'll go back to the overhead just quickly. Now with this particular table setting, you can see that the first course is your salad. And why is it your salad? Because you start from the out and work your way in towards the plate. From the out and work. So the utensils are set starting which is going to be the first course furthest out and of course the second course next to it and in this case here it would be soup. So your first course is salad, your second and of course you see the salad fork and then of course you see the salad knife. Okay those would be your two utensils you use for your salad. And then, of course, soup is next, so your soup spoon is here, so when the salad is taken away, then you have your soup that's served to you, and that would be second, okay? And your third course, of course, is your main dinner, and then, of course, your dessert utensils are here, so your fourth course would be dessert. Okay, I hope you follow me. Call me. I'm waiting to talk to someone. Give me a call, okay? Now, back to the spoons, because... In this illustration I'm giving you, I said that soup was first. Now, there's something very important about the two different soup spoons. And I'm holding them up here so that you can see them based on the shape of them. But the key to the spoons is how you eat with them. Okay? Now, of course, you have been taught that when you eat your soup, you always spoon away and then up and then into your mouth. It's always spoon away, not towards you, but spoon away, up, pause for a moment, then into your mouth. Okay? Now, this is your regular soup spoon. Your cream soup spoon is a little different. Okay? Just a little. And what the difference is, is that, you, of course, you spoon away, up, and you eat from the side of the spoon, like this. And when you do that, they know you know. They know you have been educated on how to dine properly. Because this is the difference in these two spoons, how you eat with them. Okay? So keep that in mind uh, as you develop your dining skills and uh, you go out to show the world that you know how to properly dine. I think we have a caller. Caller? Yes, and good evening to you, Mr. Wright. Steve, I missed Steve, you last you, week, sir? but uh, I said I was going to be sure to catch you this week. And by the way, the Cubs winning two to nothing. Okay. <laughs> uh, listen, quick question got to yes. ask. 
Is there such a word etiquette of time eating your dinner? You know, I'm really old school. I always used to love to eat dinner between 6 and 7. And on Sundays, we always ate it about 3 o'clock in yes. the afternoon. I want to know, is there such of an etiquette, what time you pose to eat your dinner? And I'm talking about as a family sitting, and sometimes I know that's kind of hard. All families now don't uh, get a chance to do that, but I still believe in that. Absolutely. Number two, I hate, I hate anyone putting a telephone on the dining table. I think... Telephones should be cut off. Absolutely. They don't have no business on the table. Absolutely. I don't think people eating should be looking into their telephone. Absolutely. So I just want to know what is your opinion with that. And, uh, again, I had to call you. I'm sorry Please. I missed you last week. I'm glad to see you here this week. Thank you. You know, when I get a chance, I'm going to give you a call because I know that you are teaching us something very important. And I think more people need to look and listen to the things that you have to say. So, listen, thank you for taking the call. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I want you to have a great and a safe night. And please, uh, I'd like to hear your response to what I just said. And, again, have a great and a safe night. Thank Thanks you, for Steve. taking the call. I mean, what, great, what a great caller Steve is. I, he patronized our show, and we really certainly appreciate it, Steve. Please keep it up because we do need to have you on our line talking to us. But anyway, back to your questions about the time, the appropriate time for dinner. And 6 o'clock, you are absolutely right. Between 6 and 7 is the most appropriate time, but historically, that has been the time from the customs of eating and dining that really related to the time the husband uh, returned home from work. And by the time he was home from work, he had a chance to freshen up a little bit and then join the family at the dinner table. So between 6 and 7 was the most ideal time. And that kind of became part of our ritual, rituals of dining that time. And of course on Saturdays or on the weekend, uh, 3 o'clock is a perfect, 3, 4 o'clock is a perfect time. But keep in mind, if you're, if you're having a schedule, and this is really what it translates into a schedule. If you're having a schedule, then you want to make sure that you're there for the schedule. If dinner starts at 6, do not show up at 6.15, 6.30. You know, it's not the proper thing to do, okay? And the same thing is, with, is true uh, if you're invited to someone's home and the time you're supposed to be there is 3 o'clock. Be there at 2 o'clock, 2.30. Don't have people waiting for you, okay? Okay, we have another caller. Caller. Hello? Hello? Yes. Go ahead, caller. I'm sorry. I'm, oh, okay, I should turn the TV off, shouldn't I? Yes, please. Um, <laughs> my question. Yes. I don't know whether um, uh, this first time tuning into your program, I need to know. I have a, a, a uh, dinner coming up in a couple of day, a couple of weeks. It's uh, an anniversary. Okay, great. So, and I, I I need to know what to wear. Uh, it's an afternoon affair starting at noon. Can I wear the black and white? Is that a possible? Or I have a cream color that I'm contemplating wearing, but I don't want anything that's going to conflict with the bride. So could you kind of give oh, me some it's input a, it's a, it's on an that? It's anniversary for a, a bride and groom? Yes. It's an anniversary, 10th anniversary party. Oh, a 10th, 10th anniversary party. Well, it, dep it depends. You're a guest, right, I'm assuming. Are you, are you, you're not the, the bride, are you? Yes. Oh, you are? <laughs> okay. I'm a guest. Well, then, that, see, it's up to you to decide what your color scheme is for your event. It's your I'm event. Going to, I'm, I'm going to hang up so I can listen to you on the television, okay? Oh, okay. All right. All right. A good question. Uh, that celebrating their 10th anniversary, and congratulations. Uh, you have 50 more to go. Maybe you'll be celebrating your 50th in another 40 years. <laughs> My parents celebrated their 50th anniversary, so it's possible, okay? But back to your question, because the event is your event, so you decide the color scheme, okay? Just like it's at your first wedding, you decide the color scheme. 
We are a lot more liberal today in terms of colors than what we were 50 years ago, your parents or my parents or grandparents when they married. Uh, so you do have a lot more flexibility in that. But I think the key to it is what you put on your invitation. Okay, that's really going to set the tone for the entire event. And I'm assuming you're going to send out paper invitations as opposed to email or something like that. <laughs> okay. You want to try to keep it somewhat formal, even though it may not be as formal as your original uh, wedding was. So I say to you, you know, you're free and flexible. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't encourage you to get too exotic. <laughs> you know, some people can get very exotic. So it depends on, you know, what you feel and how you feel this would be the best way to celebrate your 10th anniversary. Okay? Thank you for calling and please call again. Okay. Now I hope that answers both of our callers' questions satisfactorily. But you can always call me uh, after the show and we can have a long discussion about it. Okay? I'll be sure to give my information before the end of the show. Now, back to this European dining Okay, now that I've talked about the, the two spoons, I want to briefly give you an example because you'll be, you'll, you'll be surprised how many people do not know how to pick up a utensil. You, know, you, may, you may take it for granted that you do, but keep in mind that poise and grace is a part of the process. It's not really about the food per se, it's about the execution of your skills and how, how coordinated you are and how graceful you are. And you be, then it becomes elegant. It becomes sophisticated. So I'm going to kind of give you a, a demonstration on how to pick up a utensil. And I think you can see me in this picture here. And I'm going to do this with the fork. Okay? Now, generally, we teach our young people, and you'll be surprised, our young adults do not really understand how to do this well. But keep in mind, you have to practice. If you want to be good at basketball, you have to learn the rules and then practice. Practice, practice. And then you may get good at it, okay? And that's with any discipline. So the thing about picking up a fork is it's designed so that you can pick it up from the center. Let's see if I can turn it so you can kind of see it. Uh, okay, now underneath the fork here, the thumb comes over on top, and then you roll the utensil, and then lift the utensil so over that utensil. I simply go in, slide my first index finger underneath it, bring my thumb down on top, roll, and lift. Okay, and then the next part of that is to simply bring the fork handle into the center of your hands and rotate the fork over. So it should be in this direction, okay, in this position here. Now, there you pick up your knife. You rotate it over. First index finger is right at the tip of the blades. Now we style. We cut. Underneath the tines, never place the knife. You then place the knife on the plate. Okay? Okay? And that when you eat in European style, you keep the knife in your hand, in your right hand. Then you cut, you pierce, up and then in. The tines are always in the downward position. Now when you're ready to rest, you simply lay them down like this. You then take your napkin, you blot, okay? And then you drink. And this is a graceful kind of, you don't jerk with the glass like you're in a hurry and everything, all of that, okay? Now I'm going to move these out of the way a little bit so you can see it better. Okay, then once you start back to eating, you roll the fork up, lift it, keep the tines down. The first index finger is right here at the head of the fork, the knife, and then you cut again. 
Now, once you finish eating this course, you simply take the fork and lay it at 5 o'clock. Okay? That signals that you have completed this course. And then if you're, if you're at a, one of these fine dining establishments, they would know by the placement of the utensils that you have completed that course. And they will remove them. Okay? So essentially, this is eating European style. It's very simple. Fork remains in the left hand. The knife remains in the right hand. This is why the knives and spoons are on this side. It, regardless of whether you're right-handed or left-handed, the spoons, when you're eating your soup, the spoon should be in your right hand. You could be left-handed. You never change that spoon over to your left hand for comfort's sake. Okay? Learn to eat with your right hand the same as you eat with your left hand. Okay? So fundamentally is that. You, you, you have your utensils. The times are always down. You can learn to eat with the times down. It's not that difficult. Practice, practice, practice. Cut, pierce. You can use your knife as a shoveler to shovel the uh, item up on the, on the tines of the fork. And then you bring it up and then into your mouth. Okay? And, of course, you lay this like this to rest. You blot. Then you drink. The reason you blot before you drink is to remove the particles from your mouth. If I take and transfer those particles to the glass, you know, then you're going to have a little ring around the glass, a little oil ring around the glass, and of course, you, at the end of the meal, you, people will see that. So keep your mouth clean so that you can definitely continue to enjoy the dinner as well as remain, your glasses remain uh, oil-free. Okay? So now, time is fleeting, so I want to get back to this real quick. That's European style. American style is a little different. Not that much different, but a little different. Okay. I'm going to just use the utensils. I'm going to lay them here. And of course, the tines of the fork are up. Okay. Now, American style is, of course, you do the same thing. You roll. You lift. You do turn the fork over if you're going to cut. The fork should be in the downward position if you're going to cut. So, once you have cut your whatever items you're going to, don't, do not cut up all of the salad to get it done, get it over with, okay? It's the process of cutting that's elegant. Once you have cut, you then take the blade of the knife and have it facing in towards you and you place it on the rim of the plate with the blade facing you. Now you will see some people place it at this angle, but I prefer you do it this way because it's obvious that you just simply not laying it there just for convenience sake. Okay, you know you're doing this very deliberate when it's laying parallel to the plate. Then you rotate the fork over. And then, of course, this is one of the little tricky things you have to learn how to do. How to take that fork and hold it with those two fingers and rotate that fork where the handle is even and you slide that fork into your right hand. Then the left hand goes into your lap. Now you're ready to start to eat your salad, right? Slow it down. Don't be in a hurry. Okay? So you want to do it very gracefully and then into your mouth. Chew slowly. And then when you're ready to rest your utensil, you simply, this is American style, you simply lay the fork right below the knife on the plate. And now you're ready to blot. Use your napkin to blot. And then you drink. Okay? Slowly up to your mouth. Do not drink all the water down in one gobble. Okay? And then replace that glass exactly where it was sitting on the table. Then you're going back to eating American style. And you're eating with your right hand as opposed to eating with your left. So now you're back to... You simply rotate the fork over and into the left hand. Pull the fork handle into and then rotate it over. And then... And you replace the knife back at the rim of the plate, rotate the fork over, and into your right hand, and your left hand goes into your left. Okay? So the last part of this is completion. And completion means you place the knife in the center of the plate and the fork right below it in the center of the plate. That signals to the waiter or waitress that you have finished that particular course, and they can take the plate away. Well, that pretty much covers it. 
Uh, I'm glad you called. Thank you, my callers, for calling. Uh, this is a subject that does require a lot more to it than what I'm able to give to you in this little 35, 25, 15 minute timeline that we've been talking about this. But um, it's a pleasure to do it, and I want you to have a great Thanksgiving. Now, we may very well return to this subject uh, next week. Uh, I'll see what type of responses we're getting from our callers. But keep in mind, this is a discipline well worth learning. And I want to say good evening to you, and thank you so much for being uh, our guest for dinner <laughs> on CAN TV. Thank you again, and have a good evening.